So these kinds of formulas don't just involve putting money in the bank. It can relate to other things too, like a new job. So my nephew just graduated from college and he's looking around for jobs and he gets this first job offer. And the first job offer is $40,000 per year And there's a yearly raise, so at the end of each year, he gets a raise of 4%. So what would that mean? Well, in the first year, he's gonna make $40,000. And then at the end of the first year, they calculate his raise. Now, we know about how compound interest works. So what that means is for the second year, he's going to, from that $40,000 base, we're going to multiply by one plus the rate of 4%. And one plus 4% is 1.04. And so if we make that calculation there to figure out what he's going to make for the second year, 40, one, two, three, four thousand times 1.04. So I'm basically applying the yearly compound interest formula to his job and it, it applies. So he's going to get a raise of $1,600 for the first year. So for the second year, he's going to make uh, $41,600. And this idea, right, that's like our, our compound interest formula for one year. We have our starting amount times one plus R to the power T. And here I just let T be the first power, which doesn't really do anything. So if like he wanted to see what's gonna happen 10 years later, then he would just take his starting salary, $40,000, and multiply by 1.04 to the 10th power, and that's gonna be how much he should make if this situation doesn't change, right? If it stays at a 4% raise. 4% every year for 10 years, this is the calculation, right? It's just like compound interest. Now, so that's his first job offer, but he applied for a bunch of jobs. So he gets this offer and he says, okay, I'll get back to you in a couple of days. I'm waiting here on a couple of other jobs. And this other company says, hey, we wanna hire you too. What's that other job offer you get? And the second job offer, they look at this job offer and they say, okay, we can beat that. Um, second job offer, they say, we'll also start you at $40,000 for your yearly salary, which says, okay, that's a match. That's all right. But we'll give you a yearly raise of uh, $2,000. And he's pretty good at math. He knows well. In the first year on the other job, they're only giving me an extra sixteen hundred. These guys are going to give me two thousand. Now the catch here: it's exactly two thousand dollars per year. Right. So um, whereas in in the other job, his his raises collect more raises. Here he's just getting two thousand dollars per year every year. Um, so it's is it going to be a better deal over the long run, or will the uh, the percent raise be a better deal, right? So this one here is a fixed raise. This one right here is a percent raise. And at first glance, this one looks like a better deal. He's like, oh man, that's, that's, that's more money than the other one. So if I just put this into a spreadsheet for a second to see what's going on, We've got two job offers. We've got one with the fixed raise. Let's do the percent raise first. We've got the percent raise because that one came first. 4%. This is the fixed raise at $2,000. Same with column for the years. Slide that over. Let's 
So in the first year, either job, he makes 40,000. And then if we look at like second, third, fourth, fifth year later, the 4% raise is always going to take the amount above and multiply by 1.04. And the other job is always going to take the number above but add 2,000, right? So that's a linear raise, the fixed raise. So then I only care about these two formulas right here and I just wanna fold them down and see what's gonna happen. Okay, and let's clean them up for dollars and cents. So let's see. Uh, in, so the first year, the same. Second year, the fixed raise is better. Third year, the fixed raise is better. Fourth year, the fixed raise is better. Fifth year, the fixed year fixed raise is better. So he's looking at this like, oh, I guess I should take the job, but they, they always gives me $2,000. But then a friend of his says, aren't percents better though? Um, and he says, well, that percent's just less than 2,000. But if we expand this out a little bit to see if that's really true, what we're gonna see is that eventually, where's it happen right here, in the 13th year, the other job is finally a better deal, right? So if I look at the difference here, right, if I take the fixed raise minus the percent raise, at first, they're the same. And then if I copy that difference down, it, the fixed raise seems like, man, it's just a better deal for a long time. But then all of a sudden, the percent raise starts catching up. And between the 12th and the 13th year, the fixed raise stops being a better deal. And all of a sudden, the percent raise is a better deal. So if he's going to stay at this job for like 20, 30 years, Right, 20 years later, the percent raise is a way better deal. 30 years later, it's a way, way better deal. Okay. So the point here is straight line raise versus percent raise. Ultimately, the percent raise is gonna overtake the fixed one. It just might take a while. So it could happen sooner, it could happen later. But it's kind of an interesting comparison. And there's a, a, a homework problem and a lesson problem and an end of the week problem that are all just like this right here. All right, let's jump into the lesson.